Yeah, and you be, said, be honest with right? you. Right. If I stayed said that here, before. I would be in the Hall of Fame. And I look back on that right now. It, it's the worst mistake. According to uh, the Dodgers, Vince Coleman threw a firecracker out of his car in Los Angeles yesterday. 93, unfortunately, the, the, the firecracker incident, well, I never throw a firecracker at anybody. But that's the way the public perceived it. And so now I got to go and prove that I'm a good guy again, mm -hmm. you know. Never recovered. What did you do with the firecracker? I never have asked. But what, how did that even come up? Where did anybody? Fan, the sellout to see the Cardinals and Dodgers in Game Four. Hello, everyone. I'm Dick Enberg. It's a beautiful early evening. Temperature in the 60s. It's a cloudless sky, but it wasn't that way earlier this afternoon. And the rains that fell created a freak accident involving Vince Coleman, the star rookie outfielder of the St. Louis Cardinals. 110 stolen bases. They had started batting practice. Coleman did not see this automatic roller coming up from behind him. His leg was caught underneath it. He was trapped, screaming in pain and fear. And I was up underneath that tarp. And when they say that when you're in fear of your life, you don't feel a thing, it was a ton on top of me. Completely stopped, still. All I could visualize is this thing rolling over me, dying. And I didn't feel it. All right. We got an all-star at every position. Jack Clark, Tommy Hurd, Ozzie Smith, Terry Pendleton. Willie McGee, Cody Pitt. <laughs> what else you want to know? Best, best we had an all star to every position. <laughs> Jack Clark. Yeah, with Art Holiday. Yes. yes, yes, I've been brought up. That the <laughs> kids bring that to me. My kids today bring it to me. Daddy, you was drinking champagne. Uh, day four of the winter meetings, and once again, I've got no good news to report as far as the Cardinals are concerned. They have lost another free agent. It's official. Vince Coleman has signed a four-year, $12 million deal with the New York Mets. The yeah. And the Mets came with a little bit more money. Not that the money meant anything. It was just the fact that I wanted to win. And I thought it was a chance to win with that pitching staff that the Mets had. With Doc Gooden, Cone, uh, Viola, Ron Darling, Franco's closing. And I could be on that a winning team. That's the only thing I vision. Not knowing that the chemistry... The feel of the coming to the clubhouse was totally dismantled, disrupted, totally. Coleman stealing the pitch of the strike, the throw, safe, and now he's going to be out. He breaks for the plate, and he's caught in a rundown, trying to get back to third base. And now he's going to score. Nobody covers the plate. Cardinals lead one to nothing. He got up and just continued on. We'll have a tremendous argument, but the third base umpire, the rookie, Scott Grinder, now McGee's going to score. The scenario was that, you know, you can't stop Vince Coleman. You can try to defuse him, you know, and Willie knew that I was going, but the art of the fact that I went to third base and, and couldn't grip the base, you know, so now I overslid it and Ron Say has the ball. Vince Coleman is on the fast track. He came up to the cards this year and ran off with 41 steals and 46 games. Hot on the trail of the single season mark of 130, Coleman is surprising everybody. But the fact that when you got to St. Louis, you told them, I ain't leaving. And they said, no, 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 you know, you're, Willie's going to come back. But uh, just the, the confidence you had and, and to be able to, to tell uh, a Whitey and a Dow that. And, and just tell me a little bit about where all that confidence came from and the fact that you did that. Well, you know, the you know, way I came from has a lot to do with that. I was cut from a baseball team in, in the ninth grade. And, and coming out of high school, I thought I was really good and I wasn't offered a scholarship. Uh, so I had to, my mom told me smart guys don't starve, so I wasn't going to stay around the house. So uh, she made me go to college. And when I walked on the football team, I had to walk on there and made the football team. So, and also walk on the baseball team and made that. But that was the mentality coming from a background of playing football all those years. You're hearing all these motivational speeches, no shortcut to success. Um, so <clears throat> hard work was all I ever known. And, and I've been playing baseball for many many years and so when I got drafted by the Cardinals you know all I wanted to do is just please my mom and don't embarrass myself and uh, and George Kissel came to me and said well if you want to play for Whitey in the big leagues you got to switch it and here I am 24 years old I want you to comb your hair brush your teeth drive your car left-handed and, and and that'll have drive to your success and you know I did that for two years in 85 and when I got called up all the things that I have done since I was in the ninth grade didn't phase me because I've been playing this game of baseball all my life. So being in the major leagues was a motivational thing. So being in the big parks, 
the lights was brighter, the balls, I could see the balls here, and they was throwing strikes. So all I'd do is play pepper and put it in play. And <clears throat> with that being said, you know, Whitey was my biggest fan. And I remember talking to his, his, his wife, Mary Lou, and uh, this is like my second year in the league. She said, Whitey comes home every night, and all he talks about how great a base dealer you are and that you he's your biggest fan, you know. So <clears throat> Whitey and I, get, and I tell everybody today, if, if it wasn't for Whitey, you know, here's a kid, learn how to switch it basically in the big leagues. And my own base percentage was never great, but when I got on base, I made it happen because I wasn't afraid. And <clears throat> I kind of motivated Willie McGee because uh, Willie didn't steal a lot of bases before I got there, and I lived with Willie my first year, and, you know, what a wonderful treat that was. I mean, to this day, Willie's my best friend. And um, it was just so fun to be around Ozzy day in and day out, made you so loose. Um, you know, we had an all-star at every position. You had Jack Clark, Tommy Herr, <coughs> Willie, Terry, you know, with the pitching staff that we had with Joaquin and, Tudor and Danny Cox, you know. Was so he overlooked a little too that year. He was 18 and 9, and then we had the 220 game winners. You kind of forget Cox's great year. Uh, of course. Yeah. I mean, you know, so he was like in the background, you know. <laughs> but, you know, it was a team effort. Then you had Tar World come up that was closing the door, and Ken Daly was such a big, big, huge part of that. I mean, no one realized how the pitching staff that came together and the guys, the camaraderie that we, you know, you, Whitey thing was that if, you came to the ballpark every day with a, excuse me, a good attitude and put forth a good effort. Your ability would take care of itself, and that's what we did. Willie, I think people love. We saw you guys do double-double steals. I'm going to look up how many double steals you guys had. That has to be a record anyway, but the double-double steal in Chicago, Chicago. Is, is so fun to watch. You break a record that day, but um, I think the funniest part, is when you hear the story about Willie after. He tried to steal three bases on one play. Like, everyone stopped watching. Can you kind of describe that day and then how you guys gave Willie so much guff because he's just like, there's no one at home late. You, you, you have to see it to believe it. I mean, to, 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 to appreciate it. I mean, because, you know, at that time, you know, it was a right-hander, Scott Sanderson, and, I, you know, whether it was a record or not, I didn't know it was comes up later that I was breaking one the NL well, rookie, rookie rookie record, record yeah. right, right, right. But you know, here it is again. You know, the, the opportunity presented itself. Being a student of the game, you know, whether Tommy Hur was up was a left-hander, who still with Jody Davis, the best catcher in baseball, I think, tech, technique-wise. You know, but scenario was that you know you can't stop Vince Coleman. You can try to defuse him. You know, and Willie knew that I was going, but the art, the fact that I went to third base and and couldn't grip the base. You know, so now I overslid it, and Ron Say has the ball. I can't come back to the base. You know, so now I have to get in a rundown. And he's a penguin, <laughs> right? <laughs> short arms. feet, short stride. Yeah. So he got rid of it right away, and now. The defensive flaw in that was that the pitcher was supposed to go home. He got caught up in the whole scenario and was ended up he at was third base. enjoying the show, probably. Yeah, exactly. You guys were putting on a show. <laughs> Sanderson's like, look at these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, once Willie get to third base and he see the umpires, the commotion, and he's like, oh, he takes off going. It was the funniest thing. You got to see it. But yeah. you know, but that that was just our style of play. You know, well, how did you guys I, I, set up I, the double steal? Honestly, did I mean was that a, a, a play where you look at uh, Willie and go, "All right, I'm going," or is he just watching you? And as soon as you go, he takes off. I'm kind of curious about that. <laughs> I was a mischievous kid <laughs> growing up, you know. So. <laughs> growing <laughs> up, yeah, you're almost sixty well, Willie, years. Well, I didn't have to give Willie a sign, you know. Willie knew Vince is up to something, you know. <laughs> you know, you got to be careful anytime I get on base. I remember getting in trouble for not going, <laughs> and so, and this is another story that after my fourth year, um, I didn't take off on the first, second pitch like I normally because they were slide stepping. You couldn't get, get jumps, you know. And I go into San Diego. We on the West Coast swing for twelve days, and we go into San Diego, and why they don't start me? Now normally I come in the locker room. I don't have to look at the lineup. My name's there. At not the unless I was hurt. And so I come in the locker room. For some reason, they say, well, you're not starting today. I'm like, I, Ozzy had to, because Ozzy knew. Ozzy didn't tell me. But I look at the lock, the, the, the scoreboard, I mean, uh, the, the lineup card. I'm not in there. So, oh, well, he's giving me a day off. You know, I'm fourth year in the league, got my chest out, you know. Like, I deserve a day off. Next day, I'm in the lineup. I'm like, oh, okay, well, you got two days off. Third day, not in the lineup. Three days in a row. And I'm healthy. 
I'm good to go. We come back home, go look at the lineup. I'm not in the lineup again. So now I was like, oh, we got to go knock on the door. So I go to Whitey. Whitey, can I see you? Yeah, come in my office. So I go in his office. The first time Whitey ever cursed me out. I mean, you are the heart of this team. The beat, the, the, you the heartbeat. We don't go now unless you go. You don't let anyone intimidate you. These guys in this locker room thrive off of you. Don't let no one tell you because they slide stepping that I care whether you get thrown out. Because if you don't go, a possessed that you're not going, then that changed the whole chemistry of the game because they could throw more breaking balls. Now, you get your ass out there, you start. <laughs> you play the night. Change the lineup. That, that, change the lineup. You just wait for you to talk, come, right? Exactly. Yeah. That was the bait. That was the bait. Mm-hmm. Ozzy knew the whole time, but Ozzy never told what me. What a good friend. What a great <laughs> Um, but but that was the thing that Whitey didn't care. He well he cared because he knew we were smart enough to figure it out. He didn't want them to know that they had uh, tried to detail us from not keeping our offensive motivation going day in and day out. And you know he was so right, so true. Because now if you go into a ball game, they know you're not running. They can relax. We always want to keep them on their heels. Play a simple game of catch. But now they put a time limit on it. They go into panic. Mm-hmm. 1990 you, you, uh, is your last year here. Then uh, the whole team pretty much dissolves. Willie goes, uh, gets traded. And I, I've, I've talked to you this a million times, but every time I think about it, it just makes me want to cry. I know. Terry leaves. He goes to Atlanta. And you go to the Mets. You see Red Shane D. You see Lou Brock. You see Bob Gibson. You see Ozzie Smith. That cost me my Hall of Fame. Yeah, I mean, said, be honest with right? you. Right. If I stayed said that here, before. I would be in the Hall of Fame. And I look back on that right now. It, it's the worst mistake. Um, Augie had died. Now Whitey felt that we wouldn't have a $40, $50 million payroll to keep myself and, and, and John, I'm sorry, myself, Willie, Ken Daly, Terry Pendleton. Jack Clark was gone. Tommy Hurd was gone. So Whitey leaves. We're all you know, gone. Everybody. Every, everybody's gone. So the face of the team was going to be myself and Ozzy. And Ozzy told me, he said, Vince, you know, you would never find what we have here in St. Louis if you go somewhere else. You know. Yeah. And the Mets came with a little bit more money. Not that the money meant anything. It was just the fact that I wanted to win. And I thought it was a chance to win with that pitching staff that the Mets had with Doc Gooden, Cone, uh, Viola, Ron Darling, Franco's closing, and I could be on that a winning team. That's the only thing I vision. Not knowing that the chemistry, the feel of the coming to the clubhouse was totally dismantled, disrupted, totally different. Totally different. You know, you didn't win a ball game. Um, they, they, their agendas was totally different. Um, as a result, you know, you finish in last place, and so did the Cardinals. The Cardinals didn't play well. Well, I think it's, the, the parallels are kind of crazy. How you guys were so good, and they fell apart basically the same way the Cardinals did. They lost. Uh, they let Dykstra go. They let McDowell go on a trade. Um, Strawberry st- leaves. Strawberry goes to the Dodgers. Dodgers. Yeah, it's right. just literally when you think of the Mets, they had the same. They could have been great for ten years, and then just sort of. You know, Doc didn't do it. You know, it wasn't couldn't right, be Doc. Doc right, yeah, right, so it was hard right. to hard to watch. What was your time like in New York? I know uh, you had some interesting times up there, and you didn't really get to steal as much. And and you well, said you didn't well, win, well, right? Well, I mean, well, I, I the first month I was leading the league in stolen bases, and we played a night game in 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 in, in Dodger Stadium, a night game in Dodgers, and then we flew back to New York to play a night game, but we didn't land until eleven o'clock that day. You go home, you try to get a little rest, and you go to the ballpark that night. I pull a hamstring. Mm. I never pull a hamstring in my life. So now after like three weeks of being out, I'm trying to come back a little sore. But now I'm reading the paper. Well, he's over the hill. You know, we pay him all this money to come here to be the catalyst. And so I'm going to try to get back out there. I re-injure my hamstring again. Went back on the DL. Now I'm trying to force myself. I'm a football player mentality. I could play with a little pain. I always play with pain. But it's the difference of being pain and hurt. You I was were a hurt. punter, though, right? Uh, no, yeah, just I, I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I was an all-American <laughs> I know, punter. Yeah, three times, right? <laughs> <laughs> We've heard. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, yeah, I was going to so, ask, but yeah. So, uh, 
Uh, but I knock you out. Nah. You try to come around and come. I put the Ash Kruko. Yeah. <laughs> All the fight I've been oh, in. Oh, we gotta talk about <laughs> that. Right, go ahead. So, um, you made me lose my point. I'm sorry. Was you were talking about you got injured and I you couldn't injured, come. Couldn't yeah. come back. So now I'm on the DL three times. Yeah. My rookie, my first year. You know, I never been injured. Had made me 25 stolen bases that year. So now the next year, 92. Opening day was in St. Louis. I go to Bunt, Osborne pitching. I'm running to first base, pull my hamstring mm-hmm. again. He twists his, breaks his ankle. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you recall this. I do. I do. I, do. <laughs> I go back on the DL again. And that snowballs year two, 92. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm back on the DL. Now the media is all killing me. Mm-hmm. I got lynched in the media just because I'm hurt. Anything that happened, I got the blunt to it. They say I hit Doc Gooden with a golf club. That never happened. You know, mm-hmm. they say I got I got called out on the third strike one night, and Tobor, you know, just didn't protect me. He comes out grabbing me and say, you know, Whitey would have never done that. You know, so a lot of things went on over there that really, really didn't wasn't Vince Coleman, but. Been in an atmosphere that you're not familiar with, and the, the whole thing was just not right. You know, yeah. not 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 right. And '93, unfortunately, the the, the firecracker incident. Well, I never throw a firecracker at anybody, but that's the way the public perceived it. And so now I got to go and prove that I'm a good guy again. Mm-hmm. You know. Never recovered. What did you do with the firecracker? I never have asked, but what, how did that even come up? Where did anybody even, you know what I mean? I've never well, heard the story. Them in the locker room for number one. Okay. You know, the, the, the clubhouse guys sold them. We had them and we shot them all the time. When I grew up in Florida. Fire, firecrackers wasn't no big law. Really? You know, no, no, no. Not like it was a, a bad thing to do. So, Trust but, me, St. But, Louis people love fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> So we in the and in, we was in L.A. The thing was that we was in L.A. and in California, there's a law against not having fireworks in the parking lot. Now, someone 50 yards away outside the gate and say that they was thrown at them after we leave the ballpark. We hear about this the next day. We're like, you can't believe this. So now some little Mexican kid had rubbed their face up against a, a fence, a fell some asphalt or whatever. No, no medical reports ever been written. They just came out publicly and said, now I got to prove you wrong. Mm-hmm. But by this time, the public only sees that one little scripture saying that what had happened, right. not to the fact that I got to go through all these lawsuits. You know, I get let go by, send, uh, by, the, by, the, um, by the Mets. <clears throat> but the first person that called me when I was let go, the first person that called me was Whitey Herzog. Mm-hmm. He was the general manager of the California Angels. And he said, Vince, I know you as a person. If no one else wants you, you can come play for me. While he was playing golf with George Brett in Kansas City, George Brett was working for Kansas City and her overheard this conversation going on. They had Kevin McReynolds, who was making the same amount of money, and they made a trade with the Mets, Kansas City. That's how I ended up in Kansas City mm-hmm. in 94. 94, I was having a great year. That was the first year of the strike. Mm-hmm. No World Series that year, yep. remember? Yep. So now my four-year contract is up. 95 comes in. Great year. Hitting 300. 35 stolen bases, all-star break, and get released. Because they're bringing up Johnny Damien. Mm-hmm. I leave from there the next day and go over to Kansas City. I'm, I'm sorry. I go over right. to Seattle. Oh, Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. Big, big year. It, big year. Yeah. I go over there and set the world on fire. I'm back on turf. You know, I got bad behind Edgar Martinez, Tino Martinez, King Griffey Jr., Jay Buhner. I'm on fire. Lou Pinell is my manager. It's like being a rookie again again. And um, that was a great year for me. And now I'm Vince Coleman is back. You know, the Vince Coleman that I knew from 10 years ago, 85, now it's 95, but I'm feeling good, playing good. And that's the first time I felt good in a long, long time of playing because, you know, I knew the type of player I was, but you just went through that period of the 91, 92, 93 in New York that really 
curtail mm-hmm. my whole career. Yeah, I forgot that you had all the injuries. I remember a walk off against Mike Perez. I wasn't real happy about oh, that. You yeah, hit a home yeah, run. Yeah, you hit yeah, a yeah, uh, uh, couple more minutes if you have them. Uh, yeah. You did mention the Kruko thing, and I heard someone tell the story that you <laughs> said in the dugout that night, "We're going to brawl with the Giants." This is the 1986 brawl. Was it? You knew they were coming after you. Like they, that, they were throwing. I know Frank Williams threw at your legs twice, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but well, you, did you well, not? Well, did well, you not call? You said we're well, going to brawl tonight with these guys. I well, thought that's maybe, what I heard. Maybe I have. Well, well, we was going to. We, we was always in a competitive mode because they had a great team. They had Chili Davis, uh, Candy Maldonado, Will Clark, Matt Williams, uh, Jeffrey Leonard. You know, so they had a big home run hitting team. So, but you know, our team, how it was made up of, it was just speed. I had five stolen bases in five innings. You know, I stole second, stole third, stole second, stole third. Next time I'm up, scores five nothing. We winning. Okay, I'm up. Roger Craig gets up on the top of the step and hit him, hit him to this guy. First one he throws behind me. No, I mean hit him. Roger Craig, you can't can't be that blunt about it. He hits me, throws the pitcher out of the game. Roger Craig comes to the home plate umpire and says, why did you throw him out of the game? (laughs) You know, well, Roger Craig, come on now. You stand up top steps, you know. In the meantime, he points in our dugout to Whitey. You could not, you shouldn't be letting your players run. So Whitey runs out and says, you got all these home runs. Why to give the best arguments whatsoever? You know, so you talk about your mama, your daddy, your grandma. <laughs> Tell you how horseshit you are. Excuse me. <laughs> this is all cable, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, in the meantime, I want to hear this argument. All the whole team is around Whitey, and they're bumping chest titties. <laughs> Kruko comes up, say, Coleman, that's. And he didn't know I had a football mentality. <laughs> we <laughs> thought you were a punter. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But I told you, if you get out of line, I'm going to tackle you. And he did. And I picked him up and dumped him and cracked his sternal. And that was the only fight. And then, you know, everything broke loose. And so from then on, everything was like Giants hate the Cardinals. Cardinals hate the Giants. Now we go to the, the, the playoffs that year, you know. And, and Well, also during that year was the fight with 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 – Maybe that was the, the next, next year. was Ozzy oh, Okendo, yeah, Will Ozzie Clark. Okendo, a classic. Clark. Right. A classic. <laughs> yeah, you got to look that up on YouTube. Oh, yeah. yeah, but that was some fun times. I mean, those moments, you know, that you won't forget, they, they, they stand out as monumental and, you know, things you feel like it was just happened yesterday, you know. So when I come back here to St. Louis now, it's like, oh, my God, you're at home. You know people have your back. They love you. And, you know, it's nothing like this in, in the world that you have the, the fanfare, the fans is so great here, they're so outstanding, you know, and um, it's a blessing to be back. I have one last question. I didn't want to ask, but we always have to talk about the tarp. I don't know why. I, I just have to, because the last time we talked about it and you, you said something that I, I couldn't believe, you, you said, I thought I was going to die. I, and I think, I don't know if you remember saying that or if that's really how you felt. Maybe you were just maybe helping me out with a great interview quote. But, um, you know, we've all heard, and you, and you said it just, it just started rolling, and you didn't see it, and you guys were out there. Well, but I've, tell I've, me a little you know, bit. I've been asked that question a, 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 a million times. A million times. And, 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 I, and I don't answer the same way. <laughs> you know? But I'm going to give you the honest truth, okay. good one right now. Thank you. you know? <laughs> uh, the funniest part about it is that after it all happened, I'm sitting in the – in the training room, and all my teammates came in because they were so concerned, you know, and 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 they all was like, "You okay?" And Whitey told me to stand up, and but I couldn't put any pressure on my because I didn't feel at the time it was just pain. But I played with pain before. Whitey, I can well, you can't run because I cracked my tibia, but we didn't know at the time it was cracked. But all the guys came in, "How you doing? How you doing?" And you had to know Bobby Force, you know, to, to appreciate. And um, he was like, "Hey Vince." You were scared, wasn't you? I said, yes, I was scared. He said, the reason I know you were scared because I've never seen a black guy turn white. <laughs> <laughs> That's my force, folks. That's exactly right. And, and, but when I was up underneath that tarp, and when they say that when you in fear of your life, you don't feel a thing, it was a ton on top of me. Completely stopped, still. All I can visualize is this thing rolling over me, dying. And I didn't feel it. Mm. But when they stopped it to re-roll it back off of me, that's when I felt the pain. And just like you and I sitting here talking, Terry Pillen and I were standing 
on the first base line inside of the line and it was controlled by a man running the machine down in the right field in a trolley and he came out rolling it and it grabbed my foot and everybody said, well, did you see it? If I'd have seen it, I'd have ran away from it. <laughs> did you hear it? If I'd have heard it, I mean, come on. Fastest man alive yeah. gets hit by did a two-mile-an-hour tarp. <laughs> no, I didn't see it. Right. <laughs> of course. It knocks me down. And, 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 and you know, that was one of the most, uh, <laughs> and you got to hear Willie tell a story because Willie was like, man, you were screaming like a woman. <laughs> 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 and say you were, and I, I, I thought I was going to die. I mean, you know, because that's all the thing. And I went home that night, and I couldn't sleep that night. And I'm living with Willie. And uh, I said, Willie, come check on me every now and then. Cause, but he didn't have to go check. I was, check, I was letting him know because I couldn't sleep. You know, I couldn't Because the only thing you can visualize is that thing re rolled Sometimes I still think about it from time to time, you know. But the um, uh, only thing it, it cost me was that I couldn't play for doing that period. We lose to the Kansas City Royals. They were so comfortable and relaxed because I wasn't in the lineup. We didn't have the same chemistry, my B being up. But if you still, we was up three games and one. You know, still should have won. You know, the bad call by Dinkinger, you know, yeah. kind of cost us and hurt us too. You know, it was a big ordeal. But, you know, I know some misunfortunate things that happened, and that just happened to be one of one of many. Yeah, I hate ending on a downer, so I will say, if you go to YouTube, there's a wonderful clip of you after the, the team clinches in 1987. I don't know if you've seen this. Um, maybe oh, some best champ- team in the world. Best, uh, best team in the world. We had an all every position. <laughs> Jack Clark. Yeah, with Art Holiday. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, I've been brought up. That the <laughs> Kids bring that to me. My kids today bring it to me. Daddy, you was drinking champagne. <laughs> I said, I was celebrating. I wasn't drinking. I was just shoving it at everybody. Yeah, but all of a sudden, you know, it wasn't like you was drunk anymore. You know, you asked your questions, you gave an intelligent answer. You know? yeah, and then you just go into Vince Cullum, we've got a good team and a great ball club, and we hope we can win. Man, that was so much fun. So yeah. much fun. Well, like that I said, so it fun. is always, I love seeing you guys, you and Ozzy and Willie and, and Lou's here. It's always fun, and hopefully we'll see you in a Cardinal uniform, maybe coaching these guys up how to run, uh, you know, you never that, know. That, 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 that's the ultimate goal right now. I mean, believe it or not, it's, it's, it's on the plate right now. Now we're, we, we're in the midst of talking about it. Um, uh, I wish that uh, uh, um, it, it, I can say it's etched in stone. It's not, but it's in the fire right now, and I, I, I'm promoting it, pushing for it. I mean, nothing better to come back home and be a part, and just to give them some knowledge, because I feel with knowledge you're going to build a confidence, and with confidence you play fast, and when you play fast, you kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> and you said home. I love that you said the home because you don't live here. You're not from here, but you said home. I mean, that's this what is, it means. And that's what it means for us to see you here. Seriously. Yeah, it's, it's always, you know, I, I, it, no matter where I go, I'm identified as a St. Louis car, which is rightfully so. Mm -hmm. And when I come back here, they, they they show me that, that love, you know, and I know it's all from the heart. We got a well, the champagne and beer is flowing here in the Cardinal locker room. The uh, Cardinals as you might expect well, for being the uh, National League East champions. They're we having the quite a celebration the now. <laughs> the best in the world, right? We got an all-star at every position. Jack Clark, Tommy Hurd, Ozzy Smith, Terry Pendleton, Willie McGee, Tony Pitt. <laughs> what else you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody dressed at six o'clock. <laughs> one, one, one serious comment. What? One serious what you comment. Know? <laughs> the, the Cardinals, skin. The Cardinals had so many injuries this year. Uh huh. Um, so, so much adversity to overcome. It's really a credit to the character of this ball club, the way they bounce back time and again from all the injuries. We bounce back and we play consistent baseball. I think that's the most important word associated with the game right now. I mean, you know, when you have guys coming off the bench and being consistent every day, I mean, we, you know, we post consistency in, in offense and pitching and a relief pitching and, and defense. And when you have those uh, uh, categories, you know, that's what it's going to take to win a uh, championship. Okay, while the Cardinals reload, we're going to pitch it back to we the studio. I'll be back later on in we sports. 
a little drier. <laughs> Reporting live from a very soggy locker room, Art Holiday, Channel 5, Eyewitness Sports. Oh, thank you very much, Art. Thank you, Vince Cohen. Boy, it doesn't look like they're having any fun at all, does it?